In this video we start our journey into chapter 17 talking about electrochemistry, which turns out to be a little bit of a review from uh, Gen Chem 1, but in this case we'll talk about redox, just reviewing those to the terminology associated with those, as well as redox events, as well as galvanic cells. And so there's our learning outcomes and expectations. Feel free to pause and read through those. So like I said, this is a bit of a review of previous content. Uh, chapter four has this, this unusual section called classifying chemical reactions. It's where you cover precipitation and acid-base chemistry, which precipitation we dove much deeper into in chapter 15, acid-base in chapter 14. And then oxidation and reduction is what we're gonna dive into in chapter 17 and then coupling those reactions to generate galvanic cells. And so just a quick review of, of, of chapter four, because I don't know when the last time you had general chemistry was, uh, but what we're talking about is oxidation and reduction, right? Gaining and losing electrons. And one of the important things related to that is oxidation number slash state. And so oxidation number is the positive or negative number assigned to an atom to dictate the degree of oxidation or reduction. And so in Gen Chem 1, you might have learned a series of rules. Elemental substances have an oxidation state of zero, like O2 or oxygen has zero on both those oxygen. Oxygens. Hydrogen is plus one, O with anything else is minus two. A uh, group one element is plus one, a group seven element is minus one. Here's a general rule that you can look at. You can basically say all these will be plus one, these will be plus two, these will be zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, so on and so forth, and then the middle ground in between the two. And so you can look at basically any composition of atoms and you can say, what's the oxidation state? And so if oxygen is always minus two, that means carbon and CO2 has to be plus four. Similarly, if oxygen is minus two, carbon and carbon monoxide is plus two. Two. Uh, carbon in its elemental form is zero. CH4, if H is always plus one, that means carbon is minus four. And so these are the formal oxidation numbers associated with all these various species. Uh, something to note is there are many exceptions to these rules, many different combinations, particularly these transition metals. They can exist in many different oxidation states. And so, but these are general guidelines that, that uh, usually works pretty well, particularly if you have carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen species, that's relatively easy to, to to, to calculate the oxidation number. And again, this is formal bookkeeping. How many electrons did it lose? This says carbon is plus four. It's lost four electrons. It's given those up to oxygen. Note these aren't ionic species. It's still a covalent bond, but we do formal bookkeeping in terms of the oxidation numbers. And so the reason we want to do this is we want to talk about oxidation and reduction processes. And so oxidation, the nomenclature says a loss of electrons. And so if you have zinc metal, zinc is a zero um, in its metallic form. And if it gives up two electrons, it goes to zinc two plus. And so there's the oxidation number on zinc. That is oxidation. Alternatively, you can do reduction, right? Reduction is gaining electrons. And so you have copper two plus, you're going to add two electrons to it. It's going to go to copper zero. And so you, you had two positive charges. They get canceled out by these two negative charges. You have copper in its solid form, uh, in a copper zero form. And so this can be a bit confusing because you're talking about adding electrons and the number becoming less positive and things like that. So there's a couple of mnemonics that people like to use. One is Leo the lion says GER, and Leo in this case, loss of electrons is oxidation. GER is gain of electrons is reduction. And so if something gains electrons, you're reducing it. You're, you're, you're adding more negative charges to it. Uh, if, you're, if you're giving up electrons, that's oxidation. So Leo the lion says GER. The other one I've heard is oil rig. Oil is oxidation is loss of electrons. Rig reduction is gain of electrons. Uh, it doesn't matter how you remember this, but it's really important to remember. Oxidation, you're losing electrons. Reduction, you're gaining electrons. And we'll use this terminology over and over again when we talk about redox reactions. And so again, there's a bunch of different ways to describe this. Oxidation is where something's giving up electrons. You can think of it as the loss of electrons. Electrons are a product. The reactant is oxidized, as in this species is oxidized from M0 to M+, and it increases the oxidation number from M0 to M1. Similarly for reduction, we're gaining electrons. Electrons are the reactant where they're on this side and they're producing something that combines those two together. Uh, the reactant is reduced. In this case, M plus is gaining an electron to give you M zero, which means there's a decrease in oxidation number. You go from plus one to zero as you add that electron. And note, it could be plus two to plus one. All that's happening is an electron is being uh, given to this species and giving you a product that has one additional electron. Uh, conversely, if you're oxidized, you have uh, a certain number of electrons and you're giving up one or more of those electrons during an oxidation process. 
So this is nice in terms of formal bookkeeping. You can uh, keep track of where the electrons going. Are they gained or are they lost? But the reality is free electrons don't exist. I mean, un under ex special conditions in the gas phase, you can do all sorts of weird chemistry. But anytime you're talking about solution or solid state or battery or solar cell or whatever it is, free electrons don't exist. It's not just E minus floating around in solution. Instead, those E's are moving around in between species. And so it takes two things, one gaining an electron and one losing an electron for one of these processes to occur. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about redox reactions. We're saying reduction and oxidation are both occurring in some reaction. Electrons are being moved from one species to another species. And so uh, again, free electrons don't exist. Instead, they're combined and they're transferred between species. And so look at this reaction right here. We have zinc two plus, we have copper solid, this is copper zero. We have copper two plus and we have zinc solid, which is zinc zero. And so if you look at this, we're not you know, making and breaking bonds. We're not making new species, at least not obvious in this equation. Uh, we're not changing the elements. All we're doing is changing the number of electrons on those elements. And so what's happening is copper is being oxidized from copper zero to copper two plus. It's giving up two electrons. Uh, conversely, zinc is being reduced. Zinc is going from two plus to zinc zero. And so in this case, zinc is gaining electrons. Cop zinc two plus is gaining electrons to give you zinc. Copper is uh, losing two electrons to give you copper two plus. And so if you break this down into its half reactions, you get something that looks like this, right? Copper is giving up two electrons, giving you copper two plus. Zinc is gaining two electrons or two electrons of the reactant, and it's going to zinc uh, zero. And so there's the oxidation, copper is losing electrons. There's the reduction, Cop uh, zinc is gaining electrons. And you combine those two together, you get this overall redox reaction. And so each one of these is described as something as the half reaction. It basically says if you're going to break up the parts. The only thing that's happening is electrons are moving around. And so we can say electrons are products on oxidation, electrons are reactants on reduction, and you combine these two together, you can sum them, these electrons cancel out. Left side of the equation here is these two, right side of the equation is here, it's these two, you get this overall redox reaction. So again, unlike a lot of the other reactions we have where we're making and breaking bonds, in this case we're just bookkeeping where the electrons go. Electrons uh, go from the copper zero to the zinc two plus giving us copper two plus and zinc zero so it's moving those two electrons around and so again this is it's, it's a lot of terminology to deal with but uh, hopefully oil rig and things like that or leo the lion goes grr uh, we're talking about zinc being reduced copper being oxidized there's other ways we can describe this we can talk something as a reducing agent it's basically the species that gives up electrons and so copper in this case is a reducing agent it's giving its electron to other things and it's being oxidized you can also talk about oxidizing agent the thing that does the oxidize oxidizing or the thing that steals electrons um, that's the oxidizing agent in this case the zinc 2 plus is serving as an oxidizing agent it's stealing electrons from the copper to generate zinc zero and so again Oxidation is this process of losing electrons. Uh, reduction is the process of gaining electrons. Uh, reducing agent is the thing that gives those electrons. And oxidizing agent is the thing that takes those uh, electrons away. And so, yeah, a little bit of nomenclature to remember. All right, so we've built this foundation. We're talking about redox chemistry and half reactions. Uh, now we can start diving into at least a few of the useful applications of this. We'll only get into 17.3 uh, and 17.4 in this class, but batteries, fuel cells, corrosion, electrolysis, rust, all of this relies on these half reactions. And so we'll start our discussion with this idea of galvanic cells. And so we just saw this reaction, we're taking zinc and we're putting it together with copper two plus, and we're gonna move electrons around in the system. And so if you do this experimentally, take zinc metal and put it in a solution that's copper two plus, that's where this blue coloration comes from. What you'll see over time is actually on this zinc solid, you'll see some of this zinc solid start to dissolve. You can see it a little bit right there. And you'll see that there's copper solid starting to be deposited. And if you could measure zinc in solution, you'd see this zinc two plus. And so the blue color goes away because copper two plus is disappearing and making copper solid. And you can see that zinc solid is dissolving to give you this zinc two plus. Plus. 
correct. And so we've actually seen this reaction already, but what's happening if you could zoom in on this on a molecular level, these copper two plus ions are going towards this zinc solid. And what ends up happening is this copper two plus acts as an oxidant. It steals electrons away and it turns from this copper two plus to copper solid and it leaves behind this zinc two plus ion. So it's basically moving two electrons around. Copper two plus is stealing from zinc, generating zinc two plus and copper solid. And so if you look at the half reaction, similar to what we just saw, zinc solid going to zinc two plus plus two electrons, copper two plus getting two electrons being reduced to give you this copper solid, and you're getting an overall process like this. And that's exactly what's happening in this system here. Your, your, your copper is stealing two electrons from the zinc, generating zinc two plus and copper solid. And so copper is reduced, zinc is oxidized, we have a overall redox reaction. So one way to think about this, although it's not happening as obviously, is that electrons are flowing from zinc to copper, right? Those electrons are moving around in the system and they're moving from the zinc zero to the copper two plus, giving you zinc two plus and copper zero. And so electrons are moving from one species to another species. And that brings us to this idea of galvanic cells. Instead of putting these together in one solution, let's separate these reactions. Let's separate the copper from the zinc, but let's connect them by a wire and a salt bridge. And so what we're seeing here is something called a galvanic cell. It's basically using these, these compartmentalized reactions to move electrons across a wire and actually get voltage out of the cell. And so this is what produces current and voltage that we can actually utilize in devices. And so the same idea is happening, right? Uh, zinc is giving up its electrons to copper. Copper is stealing electrons from zinc, but we're gonna do that through this structure which effectively gives us a, uh, a battery, a way to generate voltage and current. And so on one side we have the anode, this is where the oxidation reaction occurs. So oxidation in this case is zinc is giving up its two electrons, it's turning from zinc to zinc 2 plus. And then on the other electrode we have copper 2 plus turning in copper solid, this is going to steal those electrons. And so copper is being reduced, uh, zinc is being oxidized. And so we call the oxidation side the anode, and we talk the cost the, call the reduction side the cathode. And this is, again, just more nomenclature. And so, yeah, we have oxidation on one side, electrons are going through the wire to the other side. It gets to the other side, it reduces at the cathode to generate the copper solid from the copper 2+. plus. The other thing you need in this system is a salt bridge. And the reason you need your salt bridge is essentially what you have is electrons going one way, which means you have this buildup of positive charge on one side and a buildup of negative on the other, or the less, less positive on the other side. And so the system will actually shut down if you don't balance those charges out. Like systems don't like being separated. Um, it, it doesn't like having a whole bunch of positive here and a whole bunch of negative here. And so what we incorporate is something called a salt bridge, which is basically something that allow the mobility of charges to balance out that charge difference. And so it balance, it's, it's called um, uh, balancing charge or charge compensation. And so the sodium ions that we had in this solution will actually go across the bridge to go here. The sulfate ions we had in another solution will go over here. This SO4 2 minus balances out this zinc 2 plus. Uh, and this, this uh, copper 2 plus that's disappearing making copper solid is jet balanced out by a positive charge going the other way. And so if you put these together, you put two metals that have um, different potentials. Uh, you connect them by a wire through a voltmeter. You can move electrons through that and then you need a salt bridge to balance the charges out as the reaction progresses. And so, yeah, this is what we call a galvanic cell. And so it allows us to, to separate this redox event and put it through a wire. Um, we have a uh, anode, we have the oxidation reaction, we have a cathode, we have the reduction reaction, and we have a wire and a salt bridge connecting those two. And so that's two half cell reactions combined. And the electrical wire allows us to get a voltage and a current out of the system. And then we have our salt bridge, which allows us to basically balance out that charge, neutralize the charge because the electrons are going one way, we need the negative charge counter ion to move the opposite way. And so yeah, that's what a uh, galvanic cell is. We're compartmentalizing two half reactions. Note the reaction is just the same. We would draw the reaction the same, zinc, two, uh, zinc plus copper two plus giving us zinc two plus and copper solid, but we're doing it on two different compartments because that allows us to get a voltage.
And so, yeah, if you actually do this setup, you can take zinc on one electrode, you can do copper as another electrode, you have a salt bridge between those, you hook up a wire, you take a voltmeter, and you actually measure the voltage for this particular reaction, we will get a voltage of 1.1 volts. And this, this voltage is going to be dictated by the materials. We know this because if we do zinc and copper, we get 1.1 volts. If we do um, uh, copper and silver, for example, we'll get 0.46 volts. And so this voltage, uh, it's basically telling us a driving force for this movement of electrons between, in this case, zinc and copper. In this case, copper and silver. They give us a different voltage, and that voltage is dependent on how good uh, or how easily a system wants to or a species wants to donate or accept electrons. And so what we'll dive into in the next section is we're going to start talking about where this number comes from. Uh, but the take home message here is we have a galvanic cell. We have two half reactions, a cathode and an anode. We have a voltmeter that measures the voltage between those. And we're going to move electrons across, um, a, a, across this voltmeter and we're going to get current and voltage out of the system. And that's going to be dictated by the nature of these species. What, what are we happening? What's happening in each of these half reactions? All right, to sum so to summarize, we started diving into this world of electrochemistry, first talking about nomenclature, because we have to use the language to describe what's happening in the system. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gaining electrons. Similarly, you have things like oxidizing and reducing agent, you have anode and cathode and salt bridge and voltage. Uh, it's important to know this nomenclature. Uh, redox reactions are what we use to describe these transferring of electrons from one species to another. These free electrons don't exist, at least under normal conditions. Instead, we have two half reactions that go together. We have an oxidation half reaction, and we have a reduction half reaction, and those combine together to give you an overall redox reaction. And so what we can do is this react reaction can happen anytime, but if we put it in two separate compartments connected by a wire and a salt bridge, all of a sudden we have something called a galvanic cell, and that allows us to measure current and voltage out of the system. And actually this is the foundation of, of batteries. And so we wanna be able to harness that redox reaction through a wire. Uh, finally, we, 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 we find that the electrical potential slash voltage is dependent on the materials. It's basically telling us how much driving force there is to move the electrons one way or another. And so that's what we'll dive into when we get into the next section, which is 17.3, where we'll talk about electrodes and cell potential. We'll also talk about how potential free energy and equilibrium relate to each other.